Coach, I want to start off by talking about Lily. you know, senior guard, and she's putting her time within this program, and she's made significant contributions you know, over her years here. What have you admired about Lily and just her ability to stay connected with the process, even though she has been the one who's been recognized all the time, but always seems to grind it out every time she's on the floor? Um, I mean, it, it's a hard position to be in, um, especially for a senior like Lily, who's, you know, who's been around, who sparingly starts, um, but has a huge uh, impact on the game every time she comes in on the bench. She gave, she gives us great comfort in knowing that um, what we have coming in off the bench gives us a totally different look. Um, could she start? Absolutely she could start. Um, would her impact be more off the bench? I, I think so, and that's why it's been that way. I think she's always been comfortable coming off the bench, but I, I know she would, would certainly love to start. Um, and I just try to equate it to, and I, if I'm using my basketball expertise, she she would actually be great coming off the bench for a WNBA team with the energy that she brings. And if people can see her in that element, will be great. If we put her in the starting lineup and then she feels all types of pressure to perform, it could, it could certainly be not as impactful as we want it to be, and it might be disruptive. So, you know, I, I've had conversations with her about it, um, but you see when she's selling down and, and doing Lily type things, I, I know, you know, that we, we put her in the game for a defensive presence, but she, she can score, you know. She hasn't been looking to score, and we've been trying to get her to look to score a little bit uh, more, and, and she's doing that for us. So I, I think with these – you know, coming down the, to the end of the season, you see her, you know, her value uh, even more, even more highlighted. Did we see that? The, sorry, Greg, just to jump in real quick. Did we see that the other night? I mean, we saw a sweet reverse layup. We saw her confidently take a three. Are you seeing her buying into what you're trying to push to her? It's like, hey, be aggressive with the ball when you have your opportunities. I mean, finally it kicked in. You know, and I, I think Lily is more serious about basketball at this point. Um you know, she does have an opportunity to come back um, because all, you know, all, you know, all players get another year of eligibility. You know, whether she comes back or not, I think what's happening, we want her to come back this, you know, um, what's happening is, I mean, the, the light bulb kick, kicked on. And when it's, it's done that, you know, she shines. So, you know, hopefully she'll continue to be that, that spark off the bench for us and, you know, put her in a position to, to be seen by some WNBA GMs and, it coaches. Greg, go ahead. Yeah, Don. actually going off of that, it seems the last matchup against LSU moving Lily to the four and kind of using her in that kind of small ball role was really key to breaking up their matchup zone. Is that a look that you're probably going to maybe rely a little bit more on this, this matchup? Um, I mean, I mean, we have it, we have it to, uh, in our disposal um, and it works. So obviously we'll probably, you know, put that lineup, out there once again, um, you know, but hopefully it doesn't take, you know, Lily, you know, you know, tearing off her shirt and, and, and us seeing that S on her shirt, uh, S on her chest uh, to bail us out. You know, hopefully we can play a little bit quicker than we played and not allow LSU to walk the ball down the floor and um, take the air out of the ball. You know, we have to force the issue if we want to play fast. We have to do things defensively to play fast. And Lily gave us a, a, a glimpse of what that looks like when we played them the last time. Joe, go ahead and then Mike. Coach, staying on Lily again, what type of message do you think she sends to the other players on the team, just her willingness to buy into her role? Again, that's not easily done, especially someone, as you mentioned, has been here four years, but her willingness to do what's best for the team. What message do you think that sends within the locker room? I mean, it's, it's huge. You know, she comes, she comes, I mean, the way you see her pl uh, play is the way she practices. And it, it sets a tremendous example of, you know, waiting your turn, you know, and then and, and waiting your turn turns into being an asset out there on the floor. So um, I, I, she probably single-handedly uh, raises the level of our, of our play just by her approach to the game. You know, um, you know, Alyssa doesn't play a whole lot. Olivia doesn't play a whole lot, but you you wouldn't be able to tell by what they bring to practice every day. Um, and that's probably 
more so of who they are and also just the example that Lily set for them. Mike, go ahead. John, I know, you know, as coaches, you guys look at it just as a season. You don't look back necessarily, or at least right now in the middle of a season, you're not looking back to the final four year or the couple years prior. But, you know, my, my question is, when you look back to some of those past seasons and just your experience as a coach and as a player, sometimes when you do have those losses at this time of the year, how that can actually benefit a team in terms of getting a little bit more pep in their step or just being able to... How can you be able to use that loss against UConn to continue to head in the right direction? And have you seen maybe some more urgency in practice heading into that Missouri game and then going into tomorrow's game as well? Um, I mean, no one wants to lose, but, you know, certainly um, all of our losses we, we rebounded from um, because of the type of players that we have and that, it you know, you they're, they're a little bit more focused. Um, they're a little bit more um pay they pay attention to detail um and then it, it also for us coaches it, it tells us it, it shapes what we need to what we need to be doing and concentrating on um even you know we we know that lsu is going to play a lot of zone or match up zone you know we're still working towards making sure that it, you know if we're pressured in any type of way you know late game situations you know, that is going to, that's going to be something that we'll continue to work on every single day because I don't think we were great in late game situations that we really haven't had a whole lot of games in which um, allowed us to work on those things. But UConn, you know, being that close and having to execute in those moments and we did it, um, you know, makes us go back and, and coach a little bit better and to make sure that we are prepared if we're ever in it ever in that situation again to execute um and our players are are all for it joe and then greg coach as we near the finish line on the end of this regular season you certainly have some major tough battles ahead of you guys in the next couple of weeks just where do you see your team and how do you like their um their mentality and focus in these final few games to go get what you set out for yourselves at the beginning of the season which is an sec regular season championship um I, i've always liked you know, the mentality of our team. I, I've always liked that. They are, you know, they are highly motivated women who really want to win. You know, sometimes they don't know how to win, you know, but their appetite for winning is there. And, and that's what coaches are for, to kind of help them along the way to, to, to create good habits, to be able to, you know, what, you know, to be able to, whatever style of play that our opponents are playing, to be able to bend a little bit and not just, just be on, you know, be on train tracks. This team, they can play. They they can really play. I think they're used to playing with each other. I think we are getting better and and more linked up offensively. Defensively, I think we're at a really good place um, that will allow us to maybe junk up, junk up some defenses and play that way. Offensively, we still have to be really, really um, concentrating on making sure our transition offense is, is, is much better than it's been. Cause again, empty possessions that don't lead to at least a shot to, to activate our, our rebounders. So constant battle. We've been working that probably for the past month or so we are getting better, you know, but if we were better, just a little bit better on February the 8th or whatever that was, we, we probably win the basketball game. Greg, and then back to Joe. John, I know it's kind of uh, become an annual thing to talk about parity in the women's game, but just just looking at the rankings this year, you know, none of the top contenders really seem or are, are undefeated, and it seems like with COVID, anything can happen. Just do you see it being as as, as wide open as maybe as, as it's ever been? Um, wide open? No, I don't think it's as wide open. I, I think um, it, 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 UConn is just not the you know the talk of women's basketball, there, there are a number of teams, you know, I, I would say the top 10, meaning not the top 10, but a top, like top 10 teams, like, like anybody in the, in the top 25 can be part of the top 10. <laughs> so that can win a national championship. Is that different than previous years? Yes. You know, I think the team that I, I don't even think the best team will probably win the national championship 
the team that's able to navigate COVID the best will probably win the national championship. And I just hope it doesn't come down to any team not being able to compete because of COVID. And we're we're in the danger zone right now where we, we can't have any, you know, we can't have any positives. So, you know, our players, as well as anybody that's really serious about winning the national championship, you, you got to be able to defeat COVID in, in a way um, that we've been actually navigating through it. So, you know, knock on wood, I hope we're one of the lucky ones that it doesn't impact in that way. Joe and then Mike. Coach, you mentioned something when we were talking about Lee about pressure. Now, I want to extrapolate that and talk about it with Zaya. I noticed when I was watching the game against Missouri, Zaya hits a three, kind of runs back the court, and it's like a big sigh of relief. And not just maybe with Zaya, but with other players in the team. How do you try to take that burden off the shoulders, maybe if they're not feeling their shot early, so they can just find that sense of rhythm? Because it looked like a big monkey came off her back, so to speak, when that three ball went in in the third quarter against Missouri. Well, it, it, it all comes down to habits. The, the habits that you create for yourself and our team are the habits that, that you need to display at all times. You know, even when, you know, you know, Zai, you, 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 I think she was like one for seven in the first half. Um, pressing pressing a, a little bit, you know, she's got to, and I have to do a better job of setting her up. We did that in the third quarter. And I think sometimes as, as sometimes we have to do a better job, you know. Obviously, when the is on the floor, you know, she takes on a lot of attention. So the 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 paint is going to be crowded. When we take her out, when we took her out against Missouri, we we caught we dialed up Zaya's number, and the the paint was more clear, and she was able to get in there. She was able to get her feet set and get one to drop. And once she gets one to drop, I think it it is a relief for her. And, and we know that, so we, we have to put her in a position where she can see one go in. And we'll close it out with Mike. John, I know Frank has, has spoke with us in the past uh, about this season in terms of just trying to juggle things with his players because it's kind of been like the same routine. It's, you know, go to practice, you know, or, you know, you're in the workout room, you're watching film, you go into your room, and then it's, you know, repeat. Um, how have you just tried to be able to help your players in terms from a mental standpoint? Because obviously this year is, is unlike anything else that we've seen um, in terms of just trying to be able to juggle that and be focused, knowing that you guys are coming down that final stretch and your all your goals are still ahead of you. Oh, uh, you know, I think we've been very fortunate in that, you know, I, I know our players aren't just hanging out in the dorms. I, I know that that ain't happening. They're out, you know, they all at Foot Locker at the mall. But what they what they do is they just make sure they are adhering to the protocols. You you can go out, um, you can socially distance, um, you can wear your mask, you can do it not very often, um, you know. But they they need some sanity, you know. Getting some fresh air, you know. Getting out and and you know, retail therapy is it's always good, and they always have that in their back pocket. Um, you know, it is not putting yourself in harm's way. I had a, I had one of our players. <laughs> you, you, I, I thought this was kind of just really, really responsible. Um, <laughs> one of our players uh, called me um, last week, and they're like, you know, you know, we're <laughs> we're following one of the practice guys on social media. And he's out partying, you know, so we don't want him to come to practice. <laughs> and that's serious. You know, so we made the call to say, yo, you, you got you to gotta sit this week out because, you know, and he was so apologetic. He was like, I haven't been out like, you know, either semester. He said he did have his mask on, you know, but that's where our players are. They don't want anybody even like he is a part of our family. The, 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 the practice play, he's a part of our family. He's, he's been with us, you know, all season long, but yet. You know, he made the mistake in being around, you know, too many people on social media. So we got him out of there. And and that's the mentality of, of, of these players. They don't want anybody to get in their way of at least participating in the NCAA tournament, something that they didn't do last year.